que queremos es well, eh, hablar sobre lo que eh, es el BAS Digital Innovation Hub, qué ofrece eh, el BAS Digital Innovation Hub, cuáles son sus contenidos y finalmente poder hablar cómo se accede a este, a este hub. Creemos que es importante quizás empezar por lo que, eh, es lo que enmarca al, al BAS Digital Innovation Hub. Eh, el BAS Digital Innovation Hub es uno de los pilares estratégicos del grupo de pilotaje de fabricación avanzada. El grupo de pilotaje eh, es una, yo os diría que es un espacio de, de colaboración, es un espacio de colaboración público-privada eh, con el fin de, yo diría, de impulsar el desarrollo, la implantación de la estrategia de BASC Industry 4.0. Es un espacio de colaboración en donde empresas del mundo, del mundo público intentamos diseñar y ejecutar acciones ligadas a la sensibilización de nuestras empresas con la mentalidad de nuestras pymes en todo lo que son los temas relacionados con las tecnologías de avanzada. Es un espacio, luego lo veremos, en que pretende acercar esas tecnologías al, al mundo de nuestras empresas y también yo creo que es importante señalar que el grupo de pilotajes no solamente trata de aspectos tecnológicos, sino también eh, trata de aspectos no tecnológicos, aspectos ligados a la, a la formación, aspectos ligados al empleo, eh, aspectos ligados quizá al siguiente paso que, que debemos dar después de, de la introducción de todas estas tecnologías, que es la oportunidad de poder generar eh, nuevos modelos de negocio. En la, en la imagen, de una manera muy simple tenemos lo que, lo que hemos montado a través del grupo de pilotaje. Bueno, hay una comisión ejecutiva que de alguna manera gobierna la actividad del grupo de pilotaje que está, bueno, pues está constituido por, por la administración, por el gobierno vasco, eh, también está formado por agentes de la red de ciencia y tecnología y por empresas. Y yo os diría que sobre todo quizás está formado por personas, por personas con un especial compromiso de, en la importancia que tiene el desarrollo de, de esta estrategia y compromiso de ese impulso y de esa sensibilización, de esa sensibilización que estamos, que estamos buscando. Eh, el grupo de pilotaje pasó por una primera época, quizá una época eh, eh, muy de conceptualización y diseño de lo que debía ser el grupo de pilotaje y bueno, pues eh, yo diría que a mitad de este año, a mitad de este año hemos empezado ya con una fase más, más de, de ejecución. Lo primero que hemos hecho en esa fase de ejecución es intentar hacer pocas cosas, pero hacerlo lo mejor posible. Eh, de ahí viene que hayamos definido eh, tres, tres pilares estratégicos que hemos llamado sobre los que centrar eh, nuestra actividad. El primero que es lo que luego va a dar eh, más recorrido en la, en, en la charla que, que vamos a tener es el BAS Digital Innovation Hub, no voy a entrar a, a, a describirlo ahora. Y luego los otros dos están, lo que decía antes, ligado a que no solamente la implantación de, de, de la estrategia de BAS Industry 4.0 significa la introducción de nuevas tecnologías, también significa eh, bueno, el dar sistemas de apoyo para que ese, ese sistema se pueda desarrollar. Y ahí están eh, los aspectos ligados a los otros dos pilares estratégicos, el primero es la formación para el empleo, no queremos hablar solo de formación, queremos hablar de formación y queremos hablar de empleo y diseñar estrategias con los agentes formativos eh, que tenemos en, en Euskadi para poder eh, bueno, eh, encontrar y desarrollar los perfiles educativos que, que necesitamos para cubrir eh, el empleo que se va a generar con, todo, con toda la estrategia 4.0 y el segundo pilar estratégico es el pilar ligado al diseño o al trabajo o a la conceptualización de nuevos de, eh, modelos de negocio. Of a new eh, model. Por supuesto, esto no puede ser un trabajo aislado y of hemos course, considerado que hay una, una serie de, de agentes en este país que, bueno, yo creo que no sé si con mucho acierto o poco acierto, hemos llamado a órganos asesores, que son los que están representados en la parte derecha de la imagen, que, que bueno, son, son los, eh, los órganos, los agentes en los que el grupo de pilotaje, yo os diría, se debe apoyar para poder dar fuerza a todas las actividades que, que estamos poniendo en marcha. Eh, en principio, 
no, y en principio, porque esto no es, no es una estructura eh, no es cerrada. Estamos trabajando por un lado con un foro eh, intercluster. Eh, evidentemente, los clústeres eh, deben ser el gran camino que tenemos de conexión hacia nuestras, hacia nuestras empresas. Y tenemos los dos órganos más ligados a lo que son los aspectos eh, formativos. Por un lado, el, el clúster de Agunle, recientemente eh, constituido, que agrupa a todos los centros eh, universitarios ligados a formación tecnológica, por decirlo de alguna manera, y luego eh, bueno, pues toda la red de nodos de, de FP, eh, Leia, que, que bueno, hemos visto a la mañana, Jorge, eh, Jorge bueno, es, es la, el, que, el que lidera, el que ha formado, digamos, eh, la, la dirección de todo este de, de toda esta actividad ligada a los centros de formación profesional. Este es el marco del, del Bath Digital Innovation Hub, y como digo, el Bath Digital Innovation Hub es eh, digamos, uno de los pilares estratégicos, y yo os diría, el pilar estratégico en el que en este momento más dedicación, más esfuerzo, más foco podamos estar, estar haciendo. Eh, vamos a ver si podemos eh, describir a Agustín lo que es el Bath Digital Innovation Hub, ayúdame por favor, si sí, sí, seguro que, que, que puedes complementar muchas cosas. A ver, la palabra hub, pues, por la palabra hub es un espacio de conexión. Entonces, el hub lo que pretende es, eh, yo os diría, eh, poder conectar nuestras empresas con las tecnologías avanzadas de fabricación. Poder poner a disposición de nuestras empresas una serie de servicios, luego lo hablaremos eh, con, más, con más detalle, que permitan a nuestras empresas experimentar. Y experimentar, yo os diría, a bajo coste. Y cuando hablamos de coste, no solamente es un coste en términos económicos, también es un coste a nivel de conocimiento, un coste a nivel de personas, de poder entrar en estas tecnologías sin que sean las empresas las que tengan que realizar un enorme esfuerzo en todo lo que significa poder introducir nuevas tecnologías en cualquiera de los procesos eh, productivos. Entonces el hub está formado por una serie de, de activos, activos, y me refiero a activos tanto físicos como lógicos, y cuando hablo de activos físicos son infraestructura, luego lo veremos, son, a ver, son máquinas, I'm afraid at the end of the day, two machines de, de and uh, these uh, machines are offered to all companies so that companies can experiment. I'll give you some examples for you to understand. We have additive manufacturing machines or equipment. These are technologies that cannot be accessed by many companies. So the hub basically provides companies with these technologies so that they can start yo diría, va a haber, porque todavía no lo hay, va a haber activos lógicos, es decir, va a haber soluciones digitales eh, con que las, con los que las empresas van a poder probar eh, lo que es la gestión más, eh, yo diría, la gestión del dato, la gestión del, del, del conocimiento. Y el hub lo que va a hacer va a ser ofrecer a las empresas, con especial foco en las pymes, eh, ese conjunto de servicios ligados a los activos físicos y los activos lógicos. Activos de infraestructura y también activos de conocimiento, expertise, Expertise and, uh, ¿Para qué? Bueno, pues evidentemente as well. el objetivo final es valor añadido de nuestros productos, mejora de nuestros procesos eh, de fabricación y como siguiente paso eh, la oportunidad que esto genera de poder idear eh, unos nuevos productos o unos nuevos eh, servicios. Eh, Vamos entrando poco a poco en so, lo que es el, el hub. I've, uh, eh, to el, just some básicamente va a tener dos componentes. It has two uno, major eh, uno primero es un catálogo, un catálogo de elementos físicos y lógicos que van a ser puestos a disposición de las empresas, un catálogo, yo diría, avanzado, un catálogo que va a permitir realizar esa búsqueda, es decir, que si cualquier empresa de este país quiere realizar, quiere experimentar sobre las tecnologías de fabricación avanzada, ese catálogo le va a poner, le va a dar la, pues, la lista, le va a dar el catálogo de los elementos que están en el hub y que las empresas van a poder eh, utilizar. Pero no solamente, como decía antes, es es simplemente un catálogo, no solamente es una lista de cacharros. Es no solo un inventario, una lista de software, o devices, o machines. Lo que hemos llamado una red conectada. Es decir, esos activos somos capaces de convertirlos en una oferta de servicios que realmente lleven a las empresas a poder introducirse en esas tecnologías. Por 
start using those technologies. Before we begin this afternoon's session, Agustin was telling me that I had to mention something. And uh, this is an initiative that is very important. At a European level, we've done a benchmarking of what is being done across Europe, and I believe that this initiative is a highly advanced initiative that outmatches other initiatives. I believe that there is a great deal of innovation as part of this initiative. And um, we've analyzed what is being done at the European landscape, and I believe that the best country is a, re a good reference in this at the very forefront. Yes. Topping up a little bit to what you've just said, it's the what for, the why. As a result of all the different working groups that different technological agents and companies have taken part in, and I should imagine probably some of you, if we look at the three or four events that have been held, we've drawn three or four main conclusions. Firstly, if we're going to broach this world of digital transformation, and Industry 4.0. There's no magic recipe. There's no set of instructions that if all companies follow them, we'll get a clear-cut result. Secondly, you've got to be quick. Everybody said that, both actively and passively. And now we're sort of uh, getting into this culture of a fast-fail chip. Fast, fail, cheap. So you've got to uh, do it fast, you've got to fail, and you've got to do it cheaply. But you've got to create prototypes. Yesterday, I, I spent uh, some time in a forum uh, similar, uh, at a similar event to this, and somebody said a prototype is worth a thousand meetings. And so there are no, no magic recipes. You need to fail rapidly and prototype rapidly. And some a problem that we have in the Basque country, because of the size of our companies and our ecosystem, is by no means easy to trial things, because not everybody has access to these new machines, these new infrastructures. But fortunately, and this came up this morning, with the envy of many other regions, not just in Spain, but around Europe, because uh, we've got a very wealthy ecosystem. We've got uh, cutting-edge universities, research centers, and companies. So it's a very wealthy system. And if we link that to this need to do quick prototypes and all the abilities for advanced manufacturing, it's not easy for an SME that knows that they have to get involved in Industry 4.0, which is big data, analytical data, cybersecurity, collaborative uh, robotics, additive manufacturing, hundreds and hundreds of technologies. OK, you've got to do things quickly and fail quickly. But how can I, how can I start tinkering? How can I start getting involved? How do I know how to broach this? Well, what this hub aims to do, the Digital Innovation Hub is to give uh, these companies, especially SME companies, a red, the red carpet treatment, a quick highway so that they know that if they take that highway they can access all the technologies uh, quickly and tinker with them, prototype things, start uh, playing around with them, uh, do pilot trials, prototypes, and gradually from a position in which you don't know what we're talking about, can somebody explain it to me, to, okay, I know what this is about, but I want to trial it. Okay, I've tried it, but I don't know if it's meaningful for my product, uh, to then developing something and then upscaling it. And of course, to upscale what sort of installations do I need, who should I be collaborating with, who should I talk to. And not just in the world of science and technology, but in the world of companies, suppliers, who's involved in these things? So it's like a, the red carpet treatment with um, signposts on it, so that any company, whether it's a micro company with two workers to a company that have got 15,000 employees, can approach this world and get it easy, quick immediate access, um, at low cost, to virtually any kinds of technology. You'll see later the environments that are covered 
I'm trying to be consistent to this idea of go quickly and fail quickly. Sometimes, you know, we, we tend to show videos. But anyway, the thematic areas are going to be uh, broached, the ones that you can see up on the screen. There are two in blue, flexible robotics, uh, additive uh, collaborative manufacturing, which are the two that we're going to be prototyping quickly at the end of this year, and that will be available with standardized working methodologies. And then we've got other areas of work which will be developed along next year and which will gradually be shaped as we interact with companies. So, sorry, Agustin, as I've got to make us go even speedier. By the end of the year, what he's uh, uh, spoken about will be a reality by the end of, at the end of this year. It will be in our catalogue. By the first quarter of next year, we should have what we call the digital solution hubs up and running. That is include the possibility of experimenting with all the different uh, 4.0 technologies, that's artificial intelligence, big data, cybersecurity, machine learning, etc. That should all be up and running, and that's the, the aim is that it's up and running. Mm, by the first uh, half of next year. Also, by the end of next year, we'll have defined our the services that we offer and also the methodology or the way in which companies are going to be able to approach the hub and <clears throat> make uh, requests of the different services that we offer. They could say, okay, this is, I want this. So they know the route to connect to this hub so that we can cover their needs. Yes. In all of these fields or areas, there'll be a virtual and sometimes a real connection between all those agents in the country that have equipment and assets, both physical and technological and virtual active, so that when you access via the hub, you'll have a photo of everything that exists, and then there'll be a channel, there'll be a route that you follow to ask for services related to those assets. What kind of services? I'd say actually from the most basic kind of service, i.e. I want to find out more about how this works when people talk about this kind of technology. What does it mean? So there's a service here that, that perhaps we should add to the package, which is uh, making people aware who might be interested in this, what the state of the art is. Because sometimes what you see published in the media is an anecdote, but when you actually want to get down to the ground, it's technology that's not sufficiently mature. So something, you know, just the easy entrance, which is uh, dissemination or awareness raising, to things that are more complex, such as the actual uh, relationship. I want to train people in certain fields. I want to tinker. I want to test the prototypes. I want to test them quickly. I don't actually know really whether it's going to work for what I do, but I know what it looks like and I know what it works, works like. Maybe it sort of looks like what I want to get. And from there onwards, we can get into um, specific developments, uh, which could be upscaled to an industrial level for the whole of the country. So on the one hand, we can have our catalogue of the services that we offer, and on the other hand, we've got the different technological thematic areas where you can, together, ask about all those assets that are provided in the different service areas. I don't know if we can have the set next uh, slide up. So you can probably imagine, let's uh, talk now about the two that we're going to launch right now. Who are they aimed at? Well, all those stakeholders that surround uh, technologies which might be companies, small and large, the education field, sometimes it's not always uh, easy to offer training for a certain skill if you don't have the equipment uh, available to do so. 
To do what? Well, what we've seen, maybe just to provide advice or any kind of ad hoc development that can be well done with the assets the, the different universities and technology centers have, or in many cases in the world of a, a logical assets that actually aren't in uh, this uh, network, but are actually in the companies themselves. Maybe we can use all the assets from th these different companies, make them easily accessible via our hub. So we'll start out by doing it slowly but surely. We'll start using the different assets of the basket network of uh, science and technology, and then put these assets at the disposal disposal, both internally and externally, of people that need them. We wanted to use a couple of examples which are actually pilot examples in learning, learning by doing. I mean, it's not easy to connect assets that belong to 15 different owners so that they, in a coordinated fashion, can offer services to any kind of a, a company. That's a difficult challenge, as you can probably imagine. And the devil will be in the details and that sort of thing. But the aim is to start and see how we need to modify things. And we've taken a couple of examples that I think are very different. One from the world of additive manufacturing, which is closely related to actually more to advanced manufacturing than digital transformation that has a strong digital side to it. And then the uh, world of advanced robotics, which also has a digital uh, side to it, of also an advanced manufacturing component, which will allow us to get quick prototypes, quick successes, installations that can give benefits to companies very, very quickly. What we think with these two areas, we can start getting into contact with small companies that have small problems and big companies with medium-sized problems. In the field of robotics, we're concentrating on the value chain. Here there are all kinds of different stakeholders. You've got equipment manufacturers, component manufacturers, smart components, or the smartization, not so much of the robot, but the installation itself with smart grippers or components that can perceive uh, the environment, that have a certain amount of intelligence cobots, a recognition between uh, the uh, robot operator and the robot itself. So the possibility of trialing certain things without actually having to buy them, without having to buy the equipment, you, people are going to be able to start trialing things and then offer them up to end users because we're talking here about the world of robotics and we found that somebody might come to the hub who wants to automate a certain process with collaborative robotics but doesn't know what they actually have to ask for from suppliers or somebody that wants to improve their components with a smart solution that gives it more added value but at a lower cost. So there are different fields that can be covered without forgetting the educational leg of the table because as we've already heard there's no point in setting up these major installations if we don't have people that are skilled enough to make the most of them. Because otherwise we end up speeding ahead in streaks ahead in technology. I actually tell this story of the fact that I used to be a rugby player. Before that I was an athlete. And I thought when you played rugby, all you had to do was to run fast with uh, the ball. But then I realized that actually the team doesn't follow you. You're just running on your own fast with this rugby ball. You need the team behind you. This is the same thing. If we make technology available, but there's no team that's behind 
behind that technology, then we're heading nowhere. So the, here you can see the interaction of the value chain in this case. Services that we can offer. Well, I mean, this service side of thing is actually a draft. I want you to understand it, take it as a draft of different types of needs that companies may have and that can be solved through these uh, group of assets will be interconnected and that you will be able to access via channel and you'll be able to access all of them. The working group has been surprised by the fact that that our ecosystem is so wealthy, wealthy stroke complex. Sometimes you don't realize that it, some department of a university or a lab in a given tech center has a piece of a machinery that we who are in the midst of this technological development process have never heard of. So that it can give you a manufacturing cell which is uh, cutting edge and which you couldn't necessarily access just through a telephone call or just typing a keyword into Google. So thanks to this hub, what we will be able to do is to access this combination of assets which um, is far um, better than having uh, assets scattered around in different labs and companies. How are you going to be able to use it? Maybe Manu, you can carry on. Here is uh, this uh, yellow uh, logo that says still being built. Okay, still being built, but actually we've got round to painting the walls. I think we should put still being built as the um, backdrop to all our slides because nothing is frozen in time. Yes, that's what I was trying to say to you. The hub is going to go through its own learning process, a learning process in which not only will those of us who operate the hub be learning, but also those companies that are going to come to the hub will probably teach us a lot and will correct any designs or initial designs that we've got. I said earlier, both our catalogue of assets and the definition of services is uh, a long way down the pipeline. As I said previously, by the end of the year, we want to have version 1.0 of the Hub 4.0, and from then onwards, we'll start uh, along the road. What are the challenges that are out there? Well, Hubs basically are assets that are in the Basque uh, network of science and technology, basically in our university network. We need, to, one of the challenges is to include assets from private companies and, and what their role is going to be, because obviously these assets, if, if they're being experimented with, also need to be profitable for the company that owns them. And of course, when we get involved in the network of digital hubs, we'll probably find more assets that are going to be mainly in private hands. But I think this is actually something that's interesting because we're going to be including something, something that's new in Europe, private initiative in the hubs dynamics. And the second challenge that we're working on that we're just managing to see where we're going to be uh, heading is how we're going to structure these services. What sort of method are we going to follow to be truly offer these services to companies in an orderly, structured fashion? This is something that's already uh, a long way down the pipeline. And by the end of the year, it should be finished. And so in January, we'll be officially launching the first version. Once again, as Agustin said, this is the beginning of um, an experimental period, as it were, and will get uh, better as we go on. Just to finalize, alongside the development that we're involved in, you need to know 
that it's important not to do this on our own without looking around us. So we're working in parallel with two, three advisors who I think give us this uh, additional view of something, of how this is being dealt with in Europe. We've got one person who knows what they've been doing in France, where they've been very good at getting hubs and uh, groups together. We've got another person from Germany who is where, as you know, they're uh, leaders in many areas. We've got the, their opinion on what's worked and what hasn't. And we've also got a person from, from TNO, a Dutch centre, and this is a person that the European Commission has asked to take a, a photo of everything that's happening in Europe regarding digital innovation hubs or similar things around the whole of Europe. So he's going to say, OK, this worked, this didn't work, This is, you're doing things here differently. But at the end of the day, time's up. I just finish by saying we want this whole hub to com be collapsed, to be overrun with people asking for things. Anybody that really wants to uh, trial, to tool around something that they don't have in their factory, then that's what we're going to offer you. And we're more than happy to learn by doing and to unblock any blockage that may happen. So that's it. Thank you.